everybody. So in video 1978, we looked at this idea of fluids and how air was a fluid and water was a fluid and we could take an idea from one area and transfer it to another area and this led us to the so-called sea rotor. Now it turns out that there are four variants to this sea rotor. The simplest one is called the Thine rotor which is um, from a school in France I believe and it's based on a very simple Savonius. The Savonius is just a half cup shape and what they did was stick a flat plate that projected into that cup and they got a 36% improvement on the Savonius rotor which is Kind of really, really cool. It's also super easy to make. You could make it from half a barrel, or something like this, which is a piece of guttering. And of course, we've got this profile, and the flat plate goes in an angle like that, and you'll get that huge improvement, which is astonishing. That led to the Filippini rotor. The Filippini rotor, instead of using a flat plate, uses a curved plate. Then we get the C rotor, which instead of using a straightforward semicircular cup like that, uses a conical section, so it's much more closed in. And then the final version is the lens rotor. The lens rotor is where that flat plate is moved to the edge. All these rotors are giving improvements and of course you might ask yourself which one is best. Now best is such a strange thing to ask because in one sense of course best is what's the cheapest kilowatt per hour, best is what can you make with available materials and best is which is the most efficient. Now most efficient is great unless you can't actually make it or it costs you so much to make it's just not worth the trouble. So best is very equivocal, which is one of the reasons there's all these different kind of rotors because they fit different circumstances at different times. And of course, something like the Thain rotor is dead easy for anybody to make. You can do that with a Savonius drag type and you'll get a 36% improvement. Astonishing, brilliant. We were looking at that though, because of course, what we're looking at is this idea of the Pelton wheel because that's where it all started from really. And what I've done is drawn this up in Tinkercad and you'll see that we've got a kind of cup shape within a conical section and that is going to form the basis of our rotor. And then in that rotor we've got the Filippini curve leading into it. So it's sort of a hybrid of a... Um, Filippini, C rotor, uh, Pelton wheel, whatever you want to call it. And of course, I've printed that out to give me this as a rotor disc and I've only got three blades on it. Now to experiment with this, what I've done is I've got this. This is a, um, a PC fan motor I've converted to a generator and I've done that in other videos where you can just uh, take out the electronics and rewire it a little bit, piece of cake, but it does give me a very weak generator so I can get some idea of what kind of production this has. Then we have this plate which fits neatly onto that generator like that to make me my actual generation section and then that will glue on top like that and that is my rotor done and we can get that out and see if it's actually produced something. So let's glue that on. Okay so we've come out, glued it together, stuck it on the bin and the wind's coming that way. Now there's not a lot of it so we'll see if we can get this spinning at all. But anyway, let's give it a go. Is it lighting the LED? Uh, not yet. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it was a shame we didn't light the LED, but to be brutally honest, with the best wheel in the world, any turbine this size in those wind conditions isn't going to light an LED. I mean, it's 10 centimetres by 14 centimetres. The wind speed was, what, 2-3 metres per second, so we're expecting somewhere around about 20 or 60 milliwatts out of it. That isn't going to light an LED. It won't have got above a volt, so it didn't even reach the turn on voltage. But it was in real conditions and it was under load, so we can say that the thing actually functions. The question of how well it functions and is it any better than other rotors, well, we'll have to do a bit more exhaustive testing on that. But I do like the design and clearly the design does function. This sort of trialer bike sort of tadpole design is doing something. What exactly? Well, we'll have to wait with bated breath on that one. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and um, the 
Tinkercad files. The link is in the description on these and you'll find in that file actually the smaller version and a larger version I'm working on. It's a bit of a work in progress uh, but I thought I'd put them public in case anybody wants to work on this despite the fact that those files will change over time as I work on this a bit more but you'll find more in there than just this tiny version. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.